Right, so good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from uh, today. I'm Miriam, a PhD researcher between the Dahl Center for Future Crime and the Advanced Center for Biochemical Engineering here at the University College of London. I research biocrime, the internet of ingestible things, and cyber biosecurity. And alongside my research, I'm also co-founder and director of a medtech startup. My background is in deep tech and bioengineering, and I have experience leading award-winning uh, projects during my time at AstraZeneca and Microsoft. And I'm on a mission to build secure, smart pills for smart health. Today, I'll tell you what all that means with a brief background into the topic, then I'll dive into the approach that I've taken and what my intended outcomes uh, are. So please do follow these icons on the right uh, throughout the presentation. Right, so brief background. What if I told you that your DNA is only 0.1% unique to you and that the ecosystem of microbes in your gut, your gut microbiome is more than 90% unique to you? And how does your microbial signature then affect biocrime? Well, you may not know this, but you are more bacteria than you are actually you. Bacteria that live on and inside the human body make up five microbiomes, and the gut microbiome makes up at least 90% of the genes available to your metabolism. These are essential to things like your immunity, nutrition, and when there are imbalances with your gut microbiome, then it's associated to diseases such as diabetes, obesity, and even depression. In fact, as you age, the ecosystems of microbes too grow with you. And unlike DNA that can only reveal your genetic makeup, your gut microbiome can reveal your lifestyle, who you live with, if you live in the city, or if you have a pet. And believe it or not, social behavior. As your gut is linked to your brain through what's called the gut-brain axis, both physically through the vagus nerve, but also indirectly through your gut microbiome, which controls metabolism, but can also modify behavior. Several studies have found that people who have larger social networks are more likely to have a greater gut microbiome diversity. There's also been a unique composition of gut bacteria identified and linked to behaviors such as atten uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as uh, ADHD. Don't believe me? Well, think about the food that you eat and your mood. Some food contains bacteria that make you more social if you eat it regularly and for long enough. And not getting enough of it may make you antisocial. A whole new meaning to the expression, we are what we eat. It's no wonder why there's interest in accessing the gut through emerging internet-connected digital pills. These swallowable smart pills contain sensors and have a relatively long history. NASA, for example, has been using these to help track their athletes' core temperature for almost 15 years. Now, the problem is with emerging technology comes emerging prime opportunities. Health data is being sold in the black market at 20 times more than other types of data. And unlike your credit card credentials, cannot be regenerated. You simply cannot regenerate your genome. So what does that mean for the security of valuable biological material? Yes, I mean you. Well, my research aims to underpin evidence-based policymaking regarding biocrime and where relevant to change organizational culture and practices to improve national security. I've conducted a systematic review published in the International Journal of Frontiers, edited and reviewed by members of the CDC, the US National University of Defense and Department of Health Services, and has reached more than 5,000 experts worldwide. It revealed the criminogenic potential of biotechnology, specifically in synthetic biology, but I've also elicited the opinion of field experts with both traditional uh, backgrounds, such as governmental officials or security intelligence, but also non-traditional experts, such as biohackers, really extract different views on what crime opportunities might emerge. And both strongly agreed that biocrime will take place in this intersection of the cyber and bio domains 
but that there are no current frameworks in place to really address these. In fact, in light of the pandemic here in the UK, the UK Parliament Joint Committee on the National Security Strategy published a call for evidence uh, to really assess how prepared the government is for major biological security risks using COVID as a test case. And regrettably, it found profound shortcomings uh, in how the government really safeguards national security. We contributed to this call and provided three key recommendations. Number one, create cyber biosecurity policy and standards to really strengthen our preparedness. Number two, adopt an experimental approach through ethical hacking as a harm reduction tactic. And number three, increase biotechnology and biosecurity literacy. Now, to demonstrate these key recommendations, I've led the very first Internet of Ingestible Things workshop, supported by the Daw Center for Future Crime here at UCL, and by partnering uh, by the, with a biohacking village. This workshop really brought cyber biosecurity experts and medical device regulatory bo bodies to really think about cyber biosecurity at, at the design stage of medical devices and to inform policy by delivering a set of principles. Because fundamentally, security is an innovation driver and is a business enabler. So what was our approach? Well, we call it the Hybrid Hackathon Delphi model, HHDM for short, and it has three phases. The first is the hackathon, so a design sprint-like event bringing domain experts to collaborate uh, intensely on a project. And within the stage, we have contextual talks inviting stakeholders and speakers, including leaders of cyber biosecurity and future crime research, cybersecurity professionals, medical device manufacturers, but also the users of the ingestible devices uh, themselves, such as patients and clinicians. Stakeholders of the industries of interest come from a diverse set of backgrounds and form cross-pollinated teams to submit their smart pill proposals. Phase two is the Delphi model. Here, the selected top three teams undergo a series of questioning to elicit opinions on a security by design framework relevant to the internet of ingestible things. Finally, phase three, the teams actually prototype their ideated ingestible things device so the HHDM really captures current and nuanced opinions of, of diverse field experts, whilst also generating these detailed hacking proposals, hence the hybrid. So how did we do? Well, we had over 200 attendees at our pre-hackathon talks, 27 individual applicants and 17 applicants from a diverse set of uh, backgrounds, including pharma, security intelligence, neuroscience, They've generated over 500 ideas and the finalist teams engaged with more than 4,000 people through their pitching videos and their public votes, raising security awareness for the emerging smart pill technology. Now let's meet the finalists, the three uh, top teams and their smart pill designs and proposals. First up, we have Team Smart Trace, which designed an ingestible that would trace highly contagious uh, infections such as the norovirus, but specifically on cruise ships during quarantine. Their proposal introduced the use of private blockchain for secure and transparent data transmission. Next up is team IB Deactivate. They had specialist skills in embedded systems for IoT or the Internet of Things, and they designed an ingestible things device for targeted microdosing of anti-inflammatory drugs in the gut. And this was for inflammatory bowel disease uh, patients, so patients with chronic inflammation in their gut. Their proposal focused on the need for firmware coding and telecommunication security tailored for clinical and patient acceptance. Finally, we had Team Biota AI, which targeted the 10 to 15% of the worldwide population that is estimated to suffer from some sort of gastrointestinal issue. And they proposed a secure cloud communication system designed for this wider consumer health market. Okay, so what were our intended outcomes? Ultimately, our intended outcomes were twofold. First, we wanted to demonstrate a red teaming proof of concept framework 
to be introduced uh, to national security is a continuous cycle of inquiry in emerging technology to really aid national security decision making while using the ingestible medical devices as an example technology and test bed. In fact, there was a second call uh, for evidence by the UK Parliament Joint Committee here uh, related to how a red teaming approach can be introduced uh, in national security that, that we contributed to. Secondly, uh, we wanted to produce a policy briefing, much like the biohacking community has itself, uh, related to the security required for the ingestible things ahead, their wide, uh, ahead of their widespread use uh, on the market. We asked our participants about crime forums, the ingestible things may enable, what relevant security should be put in place, who the stakeholders are, uh, and how the ingestible things should be governed. We also asked about what methods of communication uh, related to the security uh, we can implement uh, to, to consumers related on the security needs. Now, we're currently working on this, and it will be published by the end of this summer, so do stay tuned, but please be the first to find out by scanning the QR code that you see on the, on the presentation to sign up to our newsletter and be the first to find out uh, when the policy briefing has been published. So far, this research uh, supported uh, by the Dahl Center has led to a lot of knowledge transfer activities with highly specialized groups here uh, in London, as well as presenting to over 200 policymakers at the UK uh, Home Office. My work has been uh, recognized and published by the UK Parliament Joint Committee uh, of National Security and has been featured in a series of special COVID-19 policing papers by the Jill Dando Institute and Policing Insights. Uh, part of this research has also been commercialized into a medtech startup that's supported by Innovate UK uh, and that ranked top five out of last year's Mayor's Entrepreneur Health Award here in London, uh, hosted by Sadiqa on the Mayor of London. I've also been shortlisted uh, as a Greek International Woman of the Year under Science and Technology. So in an increasingly health-centered global economy, it is time for cyber biosecurity. So if you too are interested in prioritizing responsible health tech with a more bio-savvy uh, public that demands for secure so solutions, then do please get in touch. Thank you for listening.